It's Saturday. I'm bored. So let's play sick play a game I don't really like. Mao Bazoo. Yeah, let's uh let's get into this thing. <clears throat> now I did play some stuff on camera. I don't know if I'm gonna cut it in. Um fast forward it or highlights or some stupid thing. Um if I am, I'm probably gonna do it about here. If not, I was just silent for a few seconds, and nothing appeared on screen. Um, Windows 95, I don't think, had a PCI. Not 100% sure about that. Okay. So I've cut down all the trees that are not maple. I planted a bunch of saplings over here in the corner. I kind of wish this plot of land here was mine, because that would nicely separate off the uh, the, the sugar bush from uh, um, my firewood. Is this full? No, that's not full. I don't know where I'm going to plant the uh, the birch. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. Oh, I guess that's where I decided to plant plant the birch. Um, what I do have, however, is um, all the trees, except for those five, I guess, over there tapped. Um, I've got plenty of, uh, of fluid in there, as you can see. I don't think I have enough to really uh, go hog. Um boiling it off. Oh, that worked out well. This is where I had all my firewood at one time. Or the logs, anyways. The firewood managed to sit in one place, but the logs blew up everywhere. So that's super nice of it to do that. They've all changed their size, too. They were much smaller a while ago, but uh, on load, they explode. Ha 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 Unload to explode. So, uh, clean this up a little bit. Let's, uh, let's get in here. Now, I've noticed, to get the fire going, I need to put three in. Um, but to keep it at temperature, I only need two. But I'm going to stagger putting them in, uh, because I don't want them to all go down at the same time. I think one of the reasons that... Oops. That the... Uh, uh, I think the reason that the uh, the firewood explodes, or the uh, the logs explode when you, when, you, when you log in, is because... Stop it. No, that's not what I want. It's, it's really hard to get this in the right position just to sit this there. Okay, I'm going to close that. That's good. And this fire should build up to temperature. Because one log is okay um, if you don't have more fluid flowing in. But if you have uh, more fluid flowing in, it's not enough. You need two. Uh, or three if it's flowing in and you're heating up of uh, pine. Birch seems to burn a little hotter... I'm not entirely sure if that's true or if it's just a false uh, uh, a false positive. I'm not sure, but if I put uh, pine in, it seems to get hotter faster. I've already sold two barrels to the uh, to the Federation. The Ferengi wanted it, but uh, I sold it to the Federation instead. Ha ha ha! I'm so funny. Uh, you can also throw in um, paper in there to give it uh, like a little boost, a little oomph. I'll show you how to do that in a minute once I clean up a few more things. I could probably time to see how long each piece of firewood lasts, but...
Oh, it's almost at temperature. And if you do this, you get little boosty boosts. Turn that back on, and then that'll start filling. Now, I already have plenty in that reservoir, the maple syrup reservoir, so I can't really get a lot out. And I have no barrels, because I bought uh, barrels on Thursday and Friday. Or, yeah, Thursday and Friday, and I sold my syrup on Friday, so I don't think I can get the barrels back today. I think they have to be open to get the barrels back, I'm not sure. I might go and check. I am going to do my job tonight, delivering pizzas. Uh, just to get some extra money. I need to stockpile uh, taps and tubes because once these trees come into uh, adulthood, uh, I'm going to tap them all. And I'm going to slowly start eliminating everything outside the immediate vicinity here. Sap stops running at about th about uh, four o'clock, I guess. Be nice if this had like little bubbles running through it, so you could if you could see that it was working. That's nicely going. I actually enjoy this part of the game, um, making sap. I'd probably enjoy it in, uh, making maple syrup. I'd probably enjoy it in real life. I do enjoy preparing uh, mashes, you know, to, to make alcohol out of. I find that uh, fun is the wrong word. I find it a, a good expenditure of time. I've only had a few batches where I've actually bottled and uh, given them to people. Most of the other batches I've ruined, either by uh, letting them sit for too long and the water evaporating out of the traps and they just turn to vinegar. Or um, I've uh, done an experiment that hasn't worked out very well, or I've uh, I've broken the container somehow. I might have to go checking for that uh, that barrel like right now, because if I, if I don't have it, if I don't have a a, a barrel, I'm going to have to stop uh, evaporating because my my syrup reservoir is going to be too full. I go over right there constantly. Oh, does this end up on its on its back as well? Isn't that great? Eh, whatever. Well, I guess my uh, my evaporator is gonna stop sooner or later. get it up higher. Attach it right there. There? Yeah, there we go. Oh, I screwed this day up. There we go. There we go. 
How do I get up there? Um, that way, I guess. Who needs a tow service? Hopefully those barrels are there, because if not, then I've just wasted a lot of time for nothing. I'm pretty sure those, uh, the wood that I left in the, uh, uh, in the firebox is not enough to overflow the, um, the reservoir, the maple syrup reservoir. I don't know if it overflows, uh, the, uh, the trough or the, the, uh, the evaporator pool, whatever you want to call it, that does not overflow. I can keep, you can keep the, the ball valve open as long as you want, and it won't, um, uh, it won't spill out on the floor or anything. It just stops when it gets high enough. So there's got to be like a foot valve or something in there. This is pretty much the wrong vehicle to have when picking up barrels, but I think I'm only going to grab one if it's there. I, I have two. Uh, it doesn't look like my barrels are there. I don't think I can touch these ones. No, I think my empty barrels will show up here, and they're not there, and uh, I can't get in. Yeah, so I got nothing. This is a complete bust, and uh, they may not show back up until Monday, and they may not show up at all. I think in real life, um, it's sort of like a tank exchange. So if you if you bring in a full barrel, I think they give you a an empty one, kind of thing. I think, I'm not a hundred percent certain. As you can see, I like keeping my equipment full. Just not real life. Production equipment, yeah, I'd keep full. I'd keep loaded with whatever it needs to do to function, but... My car, I'm always riding at a quarter tank. I don't like putting more than a quarter tank in it. Mostly because I don't think I'm going to drive my car for more than a quarter tank before I replace it. It's an old car. It needs a lot of work, and I don't want to do the work on it. I sh I've had to fix the muffler system, the exhaust, for the past year. I've done repairs to it, but I haven't completely fixed it. I'm procrastinating on the rest. I have to do some welding, um, and I don't weld very well. I'm a, I'm a kind of a shit welder, like a four-year-old trying to put frosting on a birthday cake. And again, it's an old car. The undercarriage is so rusted, it looks like tree bark. The only reason I don't buy another vehicle is because I don't drive very much drive like a thousand kilometers a year. Why should I replace it if I don't use it? Except I do use it because I live out in the middle of nowhere. And being out in the middle of nowhere means you have to drive to get anywhere. I went to buy some groceries today and I had to get in the car. Couldn't walk to the store. I lived in Ottawa, I could. When I lived in Ottawa, I was usually never more than a five minute walk from a, a place to buy something to eat. Best place I lived was, was right beside the Carlingwood Mall. I regret leaving there. I should have stayed there. Expensive as all hell though, but exercise equipment, all kinds of stuff. One of the places I moved into didn't have any exercise equipment. I didn't have a, a gym, but had an indoor pool, which was nice, that I never used. Not even once. I think I was there for a couple of years. I don't remember how long I was there for, but never once used the, used the pool. Well, to be fair, when I lived on Carling, I never once used the exercise equipment either. So it's... Oh, now it's too cold. So after five, it's too cold. And I suppose this is done. Yeah, that's done. Let's just shut it off. Oh! 200 li 20 liters below the maximum. That was lucky. So tomorrow, I really don't have much to do around the, um, the bush. Just clean up wood. 
I don't even know if I'm going to turn the pump on because there's nothing really to 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 pump. The pump is full. The uh, reservoir is full. So. Yeah, I suppose I can fill a little more. Be able to get the third barrel. Hopefully they give me my other two back. If they give me my other two barrels back, that'll be perfect. If not, well, if, if, I get my, if I get my two barrels back and I buy a third barrel, which I might not do because I only have... Uh, well, I, I'll be able to get... Yeah, I'll be able to get it back. Be able to get the third barrel because I'll be bringing two full barrels in. So that'll give me $400. And then I can get another barrel the next day, another barrel the next day. And just keep going with this, with these clippings. See, this part of the game I like. Just planting trees and boiling syrup and whatever else. I think the driving could use a lot of work. Turn my flashlight on, which is C for some reason, and the lights for your car or L. And uh, if he was using, if he programmed in contextual keys, it could be the same number. It could be the same button. You can have C turn on the flashlight and the car lights, but not at the same time. As soon as you sit in the car seat, it uh, it disables the walking uh, the walking uh, key bindings, so that the same key can have more than one function. A lot of games could do that, but they don't. A lot of games do do that, though. The better games do. Probably because it takes a lot more work. A lot of times... I think it's uh, Oxygen Not Included that does it. That um, ERF is your, is your primary key. And it does everything. But, like, uh, say you want to go to a, um, a chest. Okay, you push E, and it opens it. But you don't want to open it. You want to bash the chest to death and you want to disassemble it. Well, then you hold shift or you hold control for, for attack or use tool. So you have overrides for the contextual keys, which is, I think, the proper way of doing it. It means that the person playing the game has to do less. They have to think less. And they just they end up playing more. I think Subnautica does that too. They have uh, mostly contextual keys, but... I also think with them, with uh, Subnautica, there is less that can go wrong. Like, like there's less to do with the same key. And I think that they utilize the, the mouse much more. Oh, it's 10 o'clock. This is usually when I go to bed because I want that generator turned on by 8. Because the uh, sap starts flowing at 9. Which is not 100% true. The sap, sap flows when the, the temperature gets above a certain point and stops when it's below. Oh, look, I got $400. Yay! I would not be using a gasoline generator. I'd be using a diesel generator. There. Now, I think I'm going to continue putting down saplings instead of picking up wood because um, who cares about wood at this point? I'm also not going to start the boiler um, until the sap starts running. Because there's there's no point to double dip that. It'd be nice to have some kind of a pocket. My summer car had a little carrier for wood. That'd be nice if there was like an actual place on the bush to to stack wood. Like right there would be great. Stack your wood up there, like firewood, just put it there, then you can take like one or two, a piece at a time or something. But, uh, 
You got to have more car parts. Can't do quality of life stuff. Got to do more car parts. One thing you got to say about uh, my summer car. All the focus was not on the car. The car was a big deal, but there was a lot of busy work you could do. And everybody was trying to get you to do work, too. It, it felt like a like a, a normal life kind of thing. You get phoned up. Suck out my sewer. Uh, give me a load of firewood. And you could explore around looking for wrecks and things that you could sell to, to the heebie-jeebie guy. And uh, he was constantly making quality of life improvements. It wasn't always about the car. Now again, I came to my summer car pretty late. It was already it already been updated quite a bit. So I don't know really how rough it was at the beginning, but looking at I, I watched the videos at the time and but in looking at those videos of uh, those YouTubers, it really seemed like a lot of the problems that this game is having he solved in the very first stages before he even released it. Like um, if a car is on a hill, and you got the brakes on, it doesn't drift down the hill. There's also this weird thing that happens in the game, where if you're parked on an incline, you go up the incline for some reason. Like, the, for some reason, the, uh, the forces are, are translated backwards. Maybe because of, of where your, the, the nose of your car is pointed, and the, the infamous brake, uh, parking brake stuff. Which really annoys me. Like, that should be the first thing you fix. Before you release the game. But, I guess people just want to get paid. I think that's why I like Playway. Playway games are not great. They're kind of... Um, really basic games. But, they are... They've been releasing the demos and... Like, previews and... First sections and whatever else they call them for you to play. And they get those things worked out. So they give you the game for free to try and then you get you give them feedback. But typically their their early releases, their their demos are playable. They're not broken things. They're not they don't have um, massive physics issues. They're just lack content and are boring. But they kind of give you a taste of of what's to come. Is it flowing yet? No, so it's 9 o'clock that it flows. It should really say here, like, below 5 degrees and above 5 degrees for when it'll flow and not flow. But I think the optimum temperature is actually 10 degrees Celsius for um, maple syrup to run. I think it's supposed to, I think the best temperature is 0 degrees overnight and 10 degrees during the day. And that's when you get the best flow for maple syrup. I don't particularly know why. It's just the way it works. I guess. I could be remembering it wrong. Last time I went to the sugar bush, I was seven, maybe? It's sort of a heritage thing in Canada, I guess. All, I, all uh, grade school students go to a sugar bush. At least in eastern Ontario. I doubt they would go, you know, in, in a more northern climate. Oh, there it is. The pump started. 9.09. Let's get uh, a fire going. So, I think I'm actually going to close this, because I don't really want that to run away. Not that I think it does. I, th I don't think it does. I think everything has a, um, a soft limit, and it just stops producing when it hits those limits. I'm pretty sure you can't overfill the barrel either, that it just stops. 
and and you can't uh, you can't floor your your syrup onto the floor. See, those are the kind of mechanics I wouldn't mind being introduced because that's realistic. And if you're you're dumb enough to do that, then you're dumb enough to do that. I wonder what happens if I put this under here. Like, how do I do this? Just like that. I don't know how to fill that, and I'm not going to try right now. Oh. Here's the flu temperature. I didn't know we had a flu temperature. Okay, if I put another piece of wood, does the flu temperature go up? Nope. Flu temp oh, the flu temperature just went up. Ah, there we go. That's good. I can look at that. Oh, reservoirs topped up. Damn. Now what am I going to do? Now let's quell shit. There we go. That should cool it right down. I don't know if opening it does anything. But uh, I want it to stop evaporating just in case I, I lose syrup. Seems pretty low. Cool. Oh, look, you can see it flowing. And now it stops, so it probably has a foot valve. Let's make sure it doesn't go back up. Ah, it does go back up. Damn. Oh, I hope I'm not wasting syrup. Woo. Guess it really doesn't matter if I waste a lot of syrup right now. Only 11 a.m. too. Now I'm going to go to my job anyways because extra money. And I would really like the reverse osmosis system. Because that's supposed to uh, double my production level. really like to get these clippings all done before I do anything else. Because having all of them right there, right beside the bush, right beside the shack, uh, will help me just, you know, maximize my productivity. But I am kind of get, getting bored of running back and forth, so I might switch tactics just to do something different. And, um, just wait a day or two until the, the saplings mature. Let's do that. So I want... Those ones over there. Especially before I close it in. Because uh, once it's surrounded by slaps... Slaplings. Saplings. I'm probably not going to be able to get this truck in there anymore. And I do that because having the brake on makes the, the wood jiggle and uh, fly out of the vehicle, which is not a good thing. Okay, so there should be a sapling or a cutting. I don't really know how cuttings work. Do know that orchards or orchids you can't just take a cutting you also have to take a sample of the soil because there's bacteria that it needs every orchid has its own bacteria that it's that is required for it to to grow properly and um, or uh, bacteria from other orchids don't work properly they're very finicky little things but apparently one plant that uh, that grows really well and is like super tolerant of a lot of different things is is pot. Pot grows very easily. Pot nowadays is is running over. Lots of pot. 
I don't think it's super legal in Britain yet. Like, it's it's still federally illegal in the U.S., but most of the the cities, most of the uh, the states have decriminalized it. And uh, Canada, it's been decriminalized, and people are getting licensed to grow it and to sell it. It's uh, starting to become a, nas uh, an inter a national industry. I think Colorado, in the first year uh, that it was legal... They made eight billion in taxes. Like, why they would ever keep it illegal, I, I don't know. Like, alcohol is more dangerous than pot, but then that's a provable fact. It's not like it's opinion. If you're gonna, if you're gonna make uh, pot illegal, you might as well make alcohol illegal. Except nowadays they say, oh, it's part of the culture. Well, yeah, but pot is also part of the culture. It's part of the culture when you made it illegal. Um, Jefferson had a hemp farm. I think it was Jefferson. Or the other doof douchebag. One of them. Yeah, they're all douchebags. Even the Canadian ones. Especially the British ones. There was, there is no leadership back then that was, that had their hands clean of anything. Back in a time where it was considered progressive not to quote-unquote sample your slaves. Now, this is probably over full now. The, um, the tank? Yep, tank is over full. Okay, can I not... Can I not tell how much is in the tank? Dick. Tank is full. Okay, let's shut the, uh, generator off, because we're just wasting electricity. Tick. <laughs> The, um, the whole point, uh, I think the whole point for the racers, for the cars and everything, and the different types of, uh, systems, is just to have something to spend your money on. Because, realistically speaking, any kind of business like this, you make more money than God. Because you have pretty much guaranteed income. There are some diseases that can affect maples that could you know kill your entire orchard but um typically you'd be very well insured against that because it takes you know 30 years for a maple to go to full maturity your insurance would cover like 30 years of lost income kind of thing if your orchard something happens to your orchard if it burns down or whatever well uh something like fire damage is is probably not not as a robust coverage, but something like Maple Blight. And I'm making that name up. I don't know if it's actually called Maple Blight. There's a couple boring beetles that I know can uh, can destroy maple crops. And you pay, depending on your risk and shit like that. It's not a, an extremely hard job to do. Like, everybody, even, even crypto uh, traders will say... Oh, it's so hard, and there's so much anxiety, and it's so full of bullshit. No, it's not. Like, if you're a trader, and you're trading, like, like a stock trader, and you're trading $100 worth of worth of funds, yeah, that's, that's super, um, that's super stressful. Because you likely don't have enough money to trade any more than $100. But if you're trading $100 million, the likelihood that you're not going to make money is almost zero. Yeah, you could lose a lot, but uh, the whole th the whole point in stock is to spread your risk. And if you spread it wide enough, and you have the you have the amount of money that you need to put things into uh, really lucrative sectors, like say oil. The only time oil has super lost was was in uh, was just after the um, the pandemic started, and anybody who kept Going into oil after that have has made that has made that back and then some, you know you you don't have risk. It's not a real risk because because there is so much spread around everywhere that the uh, a ten to eighteen percent growth margin is 
is trivially easy. But again, you have to have enough to spread around. People with a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or even as little as ten thousand dollars, you know, they're trying to get their first million as quickly as possible. And that's more risk and you will lose everything. More than likely lose everything. But if you're if you're a a, a firm, if you're a, a broker, a brokerage, you're not losing nothing. Like I defy you to show me one of these big names that has lost consistently, whose year end for more than a single year has been in the negatives. I I doubt you'll be able to show me one. Simply because for them it is a sure thing because um, as long as the market doesn't completely tank, there is growth somewhere. And growth typically outpaces uh, corrections. And uh, maple, the, uh, the maple syrup industry is really no different. It's a commodity. Um, it's a, it's a, it has a protection racket, the, uh, the Federation. It's a super, super duper protection racket, keeping profits very high. You, and you only need you only need to work basically once a year. You can do other things other other times of the year, like clear out um, non-target species and you know clear up your lot and you know tend to the trees by pruning them nicely and you know planting more saplings and being a good caretaker. But that is super not necessary. If you have a maple tree. In your on your property in your area and it's old enough it doesn't even have to be old enough it could be a it could be a, a little thing but you know the older it is the more sap you're gonna get and the less likely is you're gonna hurt it but you can make maple syrup out of it yourself you could just take the take the sap and boil it in a in a, in a pot it's not hard it's not difficult and that's one of the reasons why the Federation uh, exists because they don't they don't want just anybody getting into it. it. It wasn't it wasn't some big business that came along and said, you know, uh, we're going to do this to screw the farmers. No, it was a bunch of farmers saying we're going to do this so some dairy farmer doesn't get it in his head to uh, plant a bunch of maple trees so that in his retirement he'll have you know fifty million a year and and in maple produce and that's that's really all it is it's just it's the growers protecting themselves and you have a few growers who are loudmouths who are like who are being influenced by the u.s mostly by um i think vermont or uh producers in vermont or maine or something like that whatever the second largest producers are um, trying to get them to uh, believe that's in their own best interest to you know circumvent or or uh, get rid of the uh the federation but you're preaching to the wrong people <laughs> like super preaching to the wrong people first of all the only thing that protects quebec's limited amount of sovereignty away from canada and the federal government and and allows them to you know skirt some constitutional laws in canada would be undermined as soon as you start saying, you know, uh, this federation can't exist. Uh, because the entire thing is predicated on, pr on uh, uh, protectionism. And without that, without that protectionism, you know, they lose their, their French language protection, their, their trade protection. I remember hearing my grandfather bitch about uh, Ontarians not allowed going into Quebec to do electrical work or plumbing or any of those trade things. But when he lived in Gatineau and was um, licensed in uh, Quebec, he certainly didn't complain about it because at the time it was it was protecting his job. He only complained about it when, you know, other people around him were complaining. And again, that's the only time people complain. No one complains about unions when it's their when it's them or their brother that's not being fired because they're, you know, jerks or gotten sick or gotten injured or something. Like, uh, I'm, I'm sure I've said this before, but my biological father is a complete asshole. He's got no redeeming qualities whatsoever. No one likes him. No one wants to be around him. He's aggressive. He's, he's a, 
a, a narcissist. He's a he's a misogynist. He's he's just not a great. He's very. I don't know if he's really racist, but he pretends to be racist at the very least, just to uh, just to annoy people. But because he is a union brother in the International uh, uh, Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, he has a guaranteed job because he puts his name in, and as soon as he gets to the top of the list, uh, a company is obliged to take him, even if it's a company that doesn't want him, a company that has thrown him off site before. It's a new contract, it's a new set of people, unless it was something super egregious, they have to give him another chance. And it's good for apprentices because the same thing happens to apprentices. You don't, you get different types of work and stuff. If you, if you get on a job site and let's say you screw up just accidentally and they, they fire you because they're just, they're just annoyed that you screwed up, you put your name back on the list and um, within a few weeks or, or months or however long the, the, the list takes the cycle through, and uh, during times where it's very low productivity, where it's, there's very few new buildings going up, it takes a long time to get a job. Uh, my grandfather retired early because uh, work dried up in the 90s, at some, sometime in the 90s. And my uncle, um, who was also an IBEW electrician, he went off to work as a, as a truck driver for a few years. But when the industry started, um, started up again, started going again... Uh, he went right back in, and he got on the list, and he got a job, and he worked. And the only time my father didn't work is when he didn't want to work. And there was a lot of times that he didn't want to work. He only worked about a third of the year, more like a seasonal job. My uncle, he works. He got injured. Um, he got uh, workman's comp, and then he got something from the union. And he was able to recover. He spent, I think he, sp I think he spent five years on disability. Maybe less, maybe more. I don't know. But as soon as he, uh, as soon as he was, he was able to work again, as soon as he started feeling better, he was right back in the industry. Got on the list. Got into a, um, got into a shop. No one was allowed to discriminate against him. And because he was coming off of disability, the company had to give him special treatment because he was injured, and he was injured on the job. So um, they were super into the union. My grandfather was very protective of his own union. He hated every other union. He hated the auto union. He hated every other union that he had absolutely no ties to. And nobody he knew worked there. He loved his union. Because his union was protecting him and making him money. Even though he was a company dick, the company was union. Even though he, he skirted the laws constantly. And went behind the, the union's back. To, to work on asbestos. That's a true story. He worked on asbestos behind behind the union's back. I won't tell you where he did it or what company he was working for. Well, I guess it doesn't matter now. It's for the Ottawa University. They were doing the library and um, they went in in the middle of the night to do to do work on it. <sighs> do I go to bed early, or what do I do? Lots of time. How do I do this? Do I just sort of grab it and... Yeah. So that's one buggy pack. I guess I need to find others. Oh, does the, steering, does the bus steering wheel go on this? Guess not. What's that? Oh, that's the pump. Why is the pump there? I thought the pump was in the back of my car. I guess not. Fat. Thanks, asshole. Okay, go sleepy sleep. And then tomorrow will be Monday. And I can make more maple syrup.
there's a pretty limited time where you can where you can make make maple syrup. So I wonder where I get the rest of these things. Let's see what the to-do list says. Buggy. Steering components. I wonder where I get the steering components. Make cannabis joint. Can sealer. Buy the cottage. Why do I need more land? I got tons of land. And how do I get the how do I get the syrup back here? Or do I make another shack out there? Drown myself! Drown myself! Oh no, I'm drowning! Ah! Well, I guess I'll continue with the cleanup here. I won't continue with the cleanup because I need the truck to go grab the barrels. So I think I'll plant the birch then. And that's just to make sure I have firewood. Although I'll probably move to maple trees at some point. There's an interesting kind of bug. It's like the honeydew tick or something. Lee, I don't know what, what it's called. It's a honeydew something. And basically it will uh, burrow into a tree. It's not damaging. And it will suck the sap. And then it will kind of, you know, digest the water. And um, you can pluck this, this insect off of the tree and you can bite its butt. And it's just like this, this big plump thing of sweet sap. And uh, if it's on a maple tree, it's, it's maple. It's maple syrup. I don't think there's a whole lot of them in Canada, though. I think they need warmer climates. Uh, but I could be wrong about that. So I think there's a chance for another potato to be there, even though it super doesn't matter because my mother hasn't given me the frying basket yet, and I can't eat potatoes straight. For some reason, it's got to have gravy and fr and and uh, and, uh, and cheese curds on it. Okay, there's the potato. Hello, potato. Say hi to this guy, because I don't know if friendship decays. It might decay. I hope it doesn't, because I don't really want to talk to everybody every day. Once a week is enough. And I got one. Oh, I got both my barrels. <laughs> I got both my barrels. I'd really like tie down straps, that's for sure. I never really felt the need for tie down straps in my summer car. Even though stuff did fly around, it didn't fly around as much as this, I, from what I remember. It's like nothing has weight. Even the cars have no weight. Now, much like my summer car, once I do all of the little things, I don't really feel that this is going to have a lot of play, replay value. Some people found the mods really entertaining. Gray still play love the gu well, love the gun. He loved murdering the uh, what's his face there, the guy in the yellow car. And he loved doing little experiments like what happens if you do this, like what happens when you when you put the truck on the tracks the septic uh, tanker on there and blow it halfway to Mars. This, there's not much to look at. I've already driven everywhere and saw all the towns and all the, um, the farms and stuff. really want to get these 
get up here so I can get this barrel done. Just to demonstrate how to do it. Although, there's nothing to demonstrate. And everybody and their dog has already shown um, how to do it. So, just put it right there. And pour. That's it. Now you've got syrup. And I can take that barrel and I can sell it. Uh, right now I'm going to start the, uh, the generator uh, to turn the pump back on so I can refine, refine more syrup. Future me interrupting past me on my task cam instead of my, my normal microphone that I use to record with just to give some updated information about sugar bushes. An adult tree will, an adult uh, syrup tree, because there's more than one maple tree, will produce about one liter of finished syrup a season, depending on the season. It's too warm, ironically, you don't get as much syrup. And uh, I think in 2022, it's $30 a liter. So just owning the land, just having maple syrup trees on it, you get $30 a year per standing tree. And uh, a lot of bushes have thousands, if not tens of thousands of trees on there. But it does take 30 years for them to grow, so it is a, an investment. Oh, I guess that didn't work. There we go. So, I guess I was right, and you can't overfill your barrels. Now these cans, apparently I cannot sell. They're for personal use. I want it to keep going while I'm gone. See if it actually will. Okay. Upper part of green. Okay. Now let's hightail it to the Federation. See if I can get there and come back in time. Still got that potato on the floor. Really would like a tie-down strap. I wouldn't move these things in real life without a tie-down strap. Hell, I wouldn't move anything without a tie-down strap. Can't get any more barrels today. Do do do. Oh, I missed the. There we go. There we go. Bye. Thanks for the four hundred dollars and the six hundred dollars on Sunday. Now it's going to be more than $600 this Sunday because I'll sell another barrel tomorrow. Actually, I'll probably sell another three barrels tomorrow. I would also put up those, uh, those sticks. You know those sticks that you put up uh, on either side of your driveway to tell the, the uh, snow removal guy, hey, my driveway's here? Oh no! Oh no! It's cold, it's cold, it's cold. But it's still in the temperature, the temperature range. So if I put all, that all the way up to the top of green, I have enough time to get to the 
to get to the Federation and back. Let's drink some syrup. Yummy. Syrup. Take a swim in the vat. Ooh, I'm swimming in the vat. I don't know why you would ever need more land. Because if you fill this, like, as tightly as you can with maples, there is no way you can exceed the amount that you have. Now, what I don't know is, is that the same size tank as they're selling um, at the Federation? Like, if I buy that tank at the Federation, is it bigger? Do I get a refund for that tank? Do I have both the tanks? Once I move to electric, I won't be doing that crap anymore. I'll sell all of the excess wood to uh, my brother, and I will only keep maples. So I think at the bottom of the green, I put two wood in there, and it'll go up to the top of the green. It's a little too much. That's still not up all the way, so... Let's continue on with the, uh, uh, taking up the birch out here. Maple syrup. The diabetes treat. They also don't need to really pay much tax, because they're, uh, maple producers, because they're classified as agriculture. So they get lots of breaks. Especially with, uh, with hands. You know, like farmhand kind of thing. It's really disgusting how much money they make future me again with more information about the operation of a sugar bush. So the tax rate in Ontario for an agribusiness or an agricultural business is 12.2%. But you don't necessarily have to pay that 12.2% because the um, cost of your property, the tax taxable rate of your property is deductible from that. So in Quebec, where most of the maple syrup is produced, is 78%. In Ontario, it's 25%. But you can deduct more. If you buy any equipment for the f your sugar bush, for its operation, like if you're doing manual taps with buckets on it, those two things are deductible. If you have a vacuum system with tubes, new tubes are deductible. Um, if you are buying firewood to put into your, um, into your evaporator, that's deductible. If you're paying electricity for evaporating that, all of that stuff's deductible. Even if you hire an employee to run the whole thing for you, his salary is deductible off of that tax rate. So let's say, theoretically speaking, you pay, you are supposed to pay $5,000 in taxes out of the profit that, you, that you've made from the, uh, from the operation of your sugar push. You get an employee who just so happens to cost $5,000 for all of his service, all of his work for that couple weeks or month or month and a half or so you have virtually got all of you you virtually did that for free because you're not doing the labor um, you're paying the guy to do the labor for you and then it comes off your taxes now I know people will argue well that's not free that you're you're paying him instead of your taxes that's true but you're also not doing the work so for nothing for sitting at home watching tv while your employee does something you have gotten an amount of income for nothing for owning a property and for having a business that is it you have done nothing more you can have uh, another business on top of the uh, on top of your sugar business. That's why I keep saying that these people make insane amounts of money. Like I know $12 per tree per year is nothing, but if you have a thousand trees, that's $12,000. If you have a hundred thousand trees, which some places have a hundred thousand dollar trees, I mean a hundred thousand trees, I don't think they have that in Quebec because the Federation limits stuff. 
but uh, Vermont and Maine and those areas absolutely have properties with 100,000 trees. That's 1.6 million dollars and all of their tax all of their taxes can have deductions on them so that the the person who owns the property doesn't have to run the farm, doesn't have to do anything and then gets paid for making cars and driving them around and drag racing and all that kind of stuff with no physical or mental labor added. I'm definitely, definitely going to get that, uh, that reverse osmosis thing first because this is taking most of the day and, uh, we're not done. And, uh, I'm making 400 bucks a day, so my pizza delivery job can go shove it. <laughs> this is actually fun. Just uh, stuffing this up with fire. Personally, if it was me, I would have... If I was going to have a, an evaporator and it wasn't going to be electric, it would absolutely be propane or something. This is the kind of stuff that I like first person. Things where you have to manage a bunch of stuff and run from one thing to another. Like The only way I can think of this thing as having a hard mode is if you need to make a certain amount before a certain period or else they'll repossess your property. That would be kind of fun. You know, let's say the deed to the property, you have a mortgage on it, you still owe $20,000, something arbitrary, $20,000. And if you don't pay the $20,000 by the end of the month, you go bankrupt. Or they repossess the property, and you get nothing, and that's game over. That might be a little interesting. Okay, it's 8 o'clock, so I think I'm going to let the fire burn itself out. Yeah, I'm going to let the fire burn itself out, because I still want to go to bed by 10. And then tomorrow, I'll have a little experiment. I'll turn the, I'll turn the power on, and then I'll come out here, and I'll start the boiler, and then I'll see if we can save the game... <laughs> okay, so it's 10.15, and uh, that will be the end of the video as well, because I've, uh, I've played for two hours now, and I actually enjoyed myself, shockingly. Sleepy, <sighs> <sighs> sleepy, sleepy. I'll turn on the generator. And turn on the computer so that it's it's up and running by the time I get here. Okay. Now I run and go on the computer. Save the game and see how far that um, um, the fire goes down. And that way I know if I can save and log off. So that I'm always creating the maximum amount of maple syrup. I'm not going to bother um, eating because I'm just going to log off in a minute. What's this at? Okay, that is boiling, I think. Nope, it's gone out. So, saving and 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 stocking up the uh, uh, the evaporator uh, does not work. It ran for a while, obviously, but um, it didn't keep running. So, when I log in, I'm gonna have to stoke the fire, grab the truck, go over there, grab my my two barrels, buy a new barrel. And continue to do crap. But that's it. 
and that was enjoyable. That was it was more enjoyable than the very beginning of the game, and uh, I'll probably do one or two more. Maybe not, because this is all I see in the game right now. Well, the only other thing is to is to build the car, maybe go to the junkyard and things like that. But I don't really care about those things. I just wanted to do the maple syrup part, and I did the maple syrup part, and it was super fun. It actually was super fun doing the maple syrup. Tapping all these trees, running the pipes, that was super fun. Managing the boiler, that was super fun. Uh, driving is not super fun. And uh, I really didn't do much building the car, but dropping the wood and, and getting it all into piles, that was kind of that was kind of neat too. But the the, 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 the the maple syrup part was super fun. If I play again, it it's just going to be all of the the bits and pieces and then get hooked up to the uh to the electrical grid and then just run this thing 24 7 kind of deal but um yeah other than that i don't really see why i want to play with the cars or anything maybe if i could set up a maple syrup shop Ooh, oh oh okay so obviously the developer is never going to watch this and uh my friends are doing such a great job getting their friends to watch my watch my content uh, because only three of you friggin' watch it. But um, what would be super cool is making maple syrup candy, like little little things to make make like those little those little uh, maple leaf candies, you know that you suck on, or or little little sugar bars, or the the little the little sugar sticks. Those things are nice too. Um, like little things like that, or or have a little bit of snow on the ground so we could do like like the little little maple candy thing where you pour out the maple syrup onto the snow and then you you roll it up with it with a with a popsicle stick. That would be fun, you know. Just st stuff about maple syrup. Screw the cars. Cars are stupid. Just just really big up the maple syrup aspect of it because that's fun. Ugh. Anyways, I'm gone. Bye.